I'm going to talk to you a little bit about our program this morning. Uh, I told you earlier that this program just draws elements from what we do on a daily basis in the classroom. Uh, we may have practiced a little bit because we knew you would be here this morning, but the particular parts of the program are part and parcel of a Trinitas education. These handbells are how we teach students theory and how to read music, all students. The choirs that you see, these are not these are not audition choirs. Every Trinitas student, fourth grade and up, sing in choirs and have, has music classes. Later on this morning, you're going to see our very first ever uh, strings ensemble. Our fourth graders have started, all the fourth graders are taking violin, group strings instruction this year. We hope this is the beginning of a youth strings uh, uh, orchestra over the years to come, but they are brand new. This is their first public performance. And so you're gonna hear from them a little bit later on. And the program's not just music related. We have a number of recitations. Uh, recitations are a very important part of a classical education. And you'll see some of that happening on the stage this morning. And then you may even hear some students speaking in tongues up here. No, I mean speaking in Greek. They're speaking in Greek and Latin this morning. That's not something fancy that we put in for your sake. That's another integral part of a classical education. So look for those elements this morning. But again, it's just a snippet. Uh, if you would like a full presentation or a program, that'll happen in May at the Spring Arts Festival. So we invite you to come back for the Spring Arts Festival in May. Two other events I want to invite you to in January, right after the holidays. January the 12th is a Thursday night. Dr. Louis Marcos will be here. He, is, uh, he runs the Great Books Program out at Houston Christian University, and he'll be speaking to us on the subject of why Christians should read the pagan classics. That is open not only to all Trentos parents, it's a part of our parent education course, but it's also open to the guest and particularly to grandparents that are local. So come join us on Thursday, January the 12th. And then lastly, at the end of January, the 27th and 28th, we will be having our spring drama. That will be The Lion, The Witch, and The Wardrobe. These students are working very diligently on that and you are welcome to join us for those upcoming events. Before we begin, I will welcome Mr. Ed Varela to the stage. Let's pray together and ask God to bless our performance this morning. Father in heaven, thank you for this opportunity to take the gifts and abilities that you've given these special young people and give them back as a gift to their grandparents and parents. May you be honored by what is sung and said and thought and enjoyed here this morning. We pray all of these things in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, amen.
The Holy Holy Gospel Gospel according according to St. Luke, 2, 1 through 19. Again at your day and tithes, he marines. The keen eyes exulting, dogma parakai saras of Houston. Apograph is thy teen oikumen. Alte apographe prote, again at your hegemene wantas, te surias kuring. Kai ekure wanto, pantis apograph is thy, he costos his teen meo to polin. And it came to pass in those days that a decree went out from Caesar Augustus that all the world should be taxed. And this taxing was first made when Cyrenius was governor of Syria. And all went to be taxed, every one into his own city. Anebe de Caiosoph, Apotes Galileas, Ecpoleus Nazareth, Esten Yudan, Espolin Dawed, Hetis Palatai Bethlehem, Diato Enai Artu Ex Ulki Kai Patrias Dawed. Apocrasa sai su Mariam te enestumene. Auto use in quo. Egen to de ento enai autus, eke eclesison, hai hemerai tu te ken autem. And Joseph also went up from Galilee, out of the city of Nazareth, into Judea, unto the city of David, for he was of the house and the lineage of David, to be taxed with Mary, his espoused wife, being great with child. And so it was that while they were there, the days were accomplished that she should be delivered. Kai etikain ton huyen a teis ton pototokon, kai esparganosin a ton kai anaklinen a ton, in fatne. Dioti uk esan topos autos in to katalumati. Kai poimenes esan in te kora te ate, agraluntes kai fulisantes, fulakas teis nuktos epitein ton men a ton. And she brought forth her firstborn son, and wrapped him in swaddling clothes, and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were in the same country shepherds abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Kai angelos curiu epeste autois, kai doxa curiu perialomsen autus, kai epebotesan fobon megan, kai apen ho angelos, me fobeste, idu gardu on the lees de my humen, Semeron soter, hoti esti, ponti to lao, in pole dawed. And lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were sore afraid. And the angel of the Lord said unto them, Fear not, for behold, I bring to you good tidings, which shall be unto all men. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Hartuto humin to semeon. Hureste brefos espargano menon, kai kemenon en fatne, kai exafne segeneto, sunto angelo plethos stratias uraniu, ai nonton, ton theon kai legonton, doxa, en hupistos theon kai epigeis erene, en anthropois eudokias. And this shall be a sign unto you, ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in the manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward men. Kai e geneto, hos of pelthon, ap alton, eiston uronon, hoi angeloi, hoi poimenes, pros and olois. The octemen de Bethlehem, kai idmen, tuto, to, bremo, to, igonos, hoho, kurios, ignorisen hime. Kai elthon svisantes. Kai Anelon, Tain Te Marian, Kai Ton Yosef, Kai Te Brefos, Kemenon, In Te Fatne. And it came to pass, as the shepherds went away from him up into heaven, that the shepherds said one to another, Let us now go even unto Bethlehem, and see this thing which has come to pass, which the Lord hath made known to us. And they came with haste, and found Mary and Joseph and the babe lying in the manger. Inukeste ignorisan, peri tu prematos, tula lepentos, peri tu padiotuku. Kai pantes hoi e kusantes et damason, hupo to poemenon pros autus, hede maria pranta sune chere, ta hremata tausa sumbalusa, in te kadia autus. And all they that heard it marveled at the words which were told to them concerning this child. And all they that heard, heard it marveled, but Mary kept all these things and pondered them in her heart. Ho logos tu kuriu, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kala Christo Merry Christmas. The story of Good King Wenceslas. The generosity and charity of Good King Wenceslas is not just a Yuletide fable. He was a real person. 
Wenceslaus was the Duke of Bohemia about 1100 years ago. His father had turned from paganism to Christianity, but his mother remained a pagan. Wenceslaus was raised as a Christian by his godly grandmother, while his wicked brother remained with his parents. When Wenceslaus was 13, his father died, and his mother tried to turn him away from college. When Wenceslaus was 18, both his mother and grandmother were murdered. He became the regent of the realm. He immediately sought to rule over his people with mercy and justice as a cr truly Christian monarch. You see, Wenceslaus understood only too well that God is merciful and just to all. Morning by morning, he dispenses his justice without fail. All God's ways are just. Injustice is an abomination to God. We are called to do justice and to love kindness. Wenceslaus understood that when God cares for the needy and his people are to do likewise. We are to be like God. Be holy as I am holy. We are to do unto others as he has done unto us. If God has comforted us, then we are to comfort others. If God has forgiven us, then we are to forgive others. If God has loved us, then we are to love others. If God laid down his life for us, then we are to lay down our lives for one another. Wenceslaus understood what God meant when he said to love our neighbor as ourselves. We are to show pity toward the weak. We are to rescue the afflicted from violence. We are to give of our wealth and share of our sustenance. We are to put on tender mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, and long suffering. We are to become a father to the poor and to search out the case of the stranger. Pure and undefiled religion in the sight of our God and Father is to visit the orphans and widows in their distress and to keep oneself unstained by the world. Wenceslaus understood that. We are, to, we are to be ministers of God's peace. Instruments of his love. Ambassadors of his kingdom. We are to care for the helpless and to feed the hungry. Clothe the naked. Show to the homeless. Visit the prisoner. Protect the innocent. Wenceslaus understood all of this. But he did more than just understand it. He did it. Listen to this story. One cold and snowy night, the good king Wenceslaus was enjoying the feast of St. Stephen. He looked out over his land, illuminated by moonlight, and he noticed a poor man gathering firewood. He asked the page if he knew who the man was. The page responded that the man lived far away at the base of a mountain. King Wenceslaus immediately ordered the servants of his household to bring him food and firewood, that he may take them to the poor man's home. Thus began the king's journey of goodwill through the wintry night with the young page. Off they went together, carrying a heavy load and trudging through heavy snowfall and cold wind. The page soon told the king, Sire, I cannot go any further. The king told his page, Simply follow boldly in my footsteps. Mark my footsteps, my good page, tread thou in them boldly. King Wenceslaus and his page reached the poor man's home, bringing him plenty of firewood and a wonderful dinner to all share together. Whenever God delivered the Israelites out of Egypt, he reminded them that they themselves were once despised, rejected, and homeless. It was only by the grace and mercy of God that they had been redeemed from that low estate. Thus they were to show compassion to the brokenhearted, the poor, and the stranger. The needy around us are living symbols of our own former helplessness. We are therefore to be living symbols of God's justice, mercy, and compassion. Listen to what Wenceslaus himself said. Because the Lord abides forever, he has established his throne for judgment, and he will judge the world in righteousness. The Lord will also be a stronghold in times of trouble, a, 
a stronghold for the oppressed. As, As a consequence, a royal regent must be a bastion of both justice and mercy. At the age of 28, he was assassinated on his way to church by his jealous brother. Though he ruled only a decade, he was beloved by his people, and his influence lives on today. Therefore, Christian men be sure, wealth or rank possessing, ye who now will bless the poor, shall yourselves find blessing.
side you'll find two Christmas carols. If you'd stand and join us, we're going to start with singing Angels We Have Heard on High.
right over Bethlehem on the hill, the city of David where Christ was born. And the three kings rode through the gates and guards, through the silent streets, till their horses turned and neighed as they entered the great vineyard. But the windows were closed, and the doors were barred, and only a light in the stable burned. And cradle bare in the scented hay, and the air made sweet by the breath of pine, the little child in the manger lay, the child that would be king one day of a kingdom not human, but divine. And so his mother, Mary of Nazareth, sat beside him in his place of rest, watching the heap and flow of his breath, through the joy of life and the terror of death, were mingled together in her breast. They laid their offerings at his feet. Their gold was a tribute to a king. The frankincense with its odor sweet was for the priest, the paraclete, the myrrh for the body's burial. And the mother wondered and bowed her head and sat as still as a statue of stone. Her heart was troubled yet comforted, remembering what the angel had said of an endless reign and of David's throne. So the kings rode out to the city gate with a clatter of arms and proud array. But they went not back to Herod the Great. They knew his malice and feared his hate, and returned to their homes by another way. Send it to Bob Cratchit's. He shan't know who sent it. 
It's twice the size of Tiny Tim. The hand in which he wrote the address was not a steady one, but read it he did, somehow. Went downstairs to open the street door, ready for the coming of the poultry's man. Here's Turkey. Hello. Ooh, how are you? Merry Christmas. Why? It's impossible to carry that to Camden Town. You must have a cab. The people, by this time, pouring forth, as he had seen them with the ghost of Christmas birth, and walking with his hands behind him, he regarded everyone with a delighted smile. Look so persistently pleasant in a wood that three or four good humored fellows said, Good morning, sir. A Merry Christmas to you. Happy Christmas. And Scrooge often said afterwards that of all the blithe sounds he had ever heard, those were blithest in his ears. Now he was early at the office the next morning. Oh, he was early there. If he could only be there first, catch Bob Cratchit coming late. That was the thing he set his heart on. <laughs> and he did it. Yes, he did. The clock struck nine. No, Bob. A quarter past. No, Bob. He was full 18 minutes and a half behind his time. Hello? What do you mean by coming here at this time of day? I, I'm very sorry, sir. I am behind my time. You are? Yes, I think you are. Step this way, sir, if you please. It's only once a year, sir. Shall not be repeated. I was making rather merry yesterday. Sir. Now, Bob, my good friend, I am not going to stand this sort of thing any longer. And therefore, therefore, I am about to raise your salary. A merry Christmas, Bob. A merrier Christmas that I've given you for many a year. I shall raise your salary and endeavor to assist your struggling family. Pick up the buyers and buy another full scuttle before you dot another eye, Bob Cratchit. Scrooge was better than his word. He did it all and infinitely more. And to tell him he did not die, he was a second father. He became as good a friend, as good a master, and as good a man as the good old city knew. So people laughed to see the alteration in him. But he let them laugh, and little he did. For he was wise enough to know that nothing ever happened on this earth for good, of which some people did not have their fill of laughter at the absence. And knowing that such a sea would be blind anyway, he thought it quite as well that they should wrinkle up their eyes and grins, as have the malady the less attractive forms. His own heart laughed, and that was quite enough for him. It was always said of him that he knew how to keep Christmas well, if any man alive possessed the knowledge. May that be truly said of us and all of us. And so, as Tiny Tim observed, God bless us, everyone. <laughs> Thank you. 